This video consists of two parts. The first part is a brief summary of the play Medea by Euripides, and the second part discusses a few possible themes within the play. Medea is a play written by the Greek playwright Euripides. This play is essentially the conclusion of the mythological tale of Jason and the Argonauts and the quest for the Golden Fleece. So before discussing the play, some backstory concerning the previous events before this play should be explained. Jason, who lived in the land of Eoclus, was told by his uncle Peleus if he wanted to be king, he needed to bring him the Golden Fleece. So he and the Argonauts sailed to the land of Colchis, where he met Medea. Medea agreed to aid him in stealing the fleece if he promised to marry her. Jason agreed, and she helped him perform various tasks, and with the use of her drugs, put the dragon that was guarding the fleece to sleep, and stole the fleece. However, when they returned to Yokelis, Jason's uncle Peleus refused to step down from the throne. Medea, in an effort to help Jason, tricked Peleus' daughter into killing him. The trick backfired. When the population found out what she did, they were furious, which caused Jason and Medea to flee. They eventually ended up settling in Corinth, where they had two children and lived under the rule of King Creon. This is where this play begins, in Corinth. Jason has decided to divorce Medea to marry the king of Corinth's daughter, so he can become a king. The play opens with a nurse of Medea. She appears and reminisces about the past, saying she wished the Argo never arrived on the shores of Colchis, because then Medea would never have met Jason. The nurse says she believes Medea will harm her children, and tells the servant to keep them away from her. Medea then enters saying she wishes for death, and gives a rhetorically powerful speech about the plight of women and how they are mistreated in society. She then says what is probably the most memorable line in the play when she says, I would rather be sent three times over to the battlefront than give birth to a single child. She then asks the court she then asks the chorus of Corinthian women to promise to keep silent when she carries out her revenge. King Creon then enters and orders Medea to take her children and leave Corinth because he fears she is plotting some harm to his family. Medea begs and pleads with Creon to allow her to stay. However, Creon will not relent. Medea finally manipulates Creon into allowing her to stay for one day longer. She does this by appealing to his feeling towards his children. Medea tells him she needs time to make arrangements for her children and that being a father, he should understand her circumstances. Creon agrees to give her one day. He then leaves warning Medea that if she stays longer than a day, she will be put to death. Jason enters and immediately tells Medea that she is to blame for the situation. He says had she just shown some respect towards Creon, he would have allowed her to remain in Corinth. However, he, he still says he cares for her and offers to give Medea money so that the exile will not be too hard for her and their children. Medea calls Jason a coward and reminds him of all the sacrifices she made for him, including killing her brother and betraying her father and killing his uncle. Jason replies that it is Aphrodite who he owes all his fortune to and says Medea has come out far ahead in the transaction than she could imagine since she was brought by Jason into the enlightened, enlightenment of Greek society where she was able to use her talent to acquire a certain level of fame she never would have received had she remained in Colchis. Jason departs with Medea, again refusing to accept any of Jason's money for her exile. After Medea leaves, King Aegeus of Athens enters an old friend of Medea. He says he has come to Corinth to find a way he and his wife can conceive children. 
Medea tells him about her situation and they strike a deal. Medea will agree to give him drugs that will cure his sterility and he will agree to give Medea protection in Athens once she commits her crimes against, against Jason and King Creon. Aegeus agrees to this under one condition. The condition is that Medea has to make it to Athens on her own. Aegeus makes a formal oath to the gods that he will agree to the terms of the deal. Aegeus leaves and then Medea describes how she will get her revenge on Jason by killing the princess, by sending her a poison wedding dress, and then killing her and Jason's two children. The chorus of Corinthian women tell her not to go through with it, but Medea is insistent and Medea calls for Jason. Jason enters and Medea, Medea tells him that she forgives him and that he was right all along and agrees, and agrees with the new marriage. She says she wants the children to stay in Corinth and live with them. She tells him to have the children deliver a gift to the princess of a crown and wedding dress and then have the princess ask her father Creon to allow the children to remain in Corinth. Jason agrees and leaves with the children and, and the gifts. Medea then waits. The children, return, the children return with the attendant who says the princess happily accepted the gifts and agreed to allow the children to stay. Medea reacts with disappointment. However, a short time later, a messenger runs in and tells Medea to, to flee for her life as the princess was killed. Medea is thrilled by the news and asks the messenger to describe the, in detail the princess's death. He does and he also describes how the poison from the dress also killed King Creon who grabbed a hold of her dead body. Medea then kills her two children. Jason then enters asking where Medea is. He wants to get the children to safety, fearing the heirs of Creon will kill them in revenge. The chorus tells him that Medea has killed them. Jason orders the doors to the gate be opened and sees Medea with their dead children on the roof in her chariot that is drawn by two dragons, which was sent to her by her grandfather Helios the sun god. Jason curses Medea for killing their children. Medea responds by saying it was his insolence that really killed them. Jason begs Medea to let him bury the bodies of their children. Medea refuses and flies off in her chariot to Athens. The chorus then chants a verse about how Zeus creates situations that are beyond our expectations. This second part of the video will discuss some possible themes within the play Medea. The first and probably the most obvious theme within this play is gender. One of the things that makes Medea so popular among today's audiences is that it has a strong, aggressive woman who not only kills a powerful king and princess, but sets up the situation so that she completely avoids punishment. This is probably one of the reasons this play finished last in the Athenian play festival as it surely must have offended the aristocratic male audience of that time. As previously mentioned in the summary, probably the most memorable line in the play is when Medea makes her speech in which she says she would rather be sent three times to the battlefront than give birth to one child. In the speech, Euripides has Medea describe in empathetic detail the way women in ancient Greek society are oppressed and what a miserable existence they live. What's interesting about this about this speech is that not long after Me is that not long after Medea encounters Jason for the first time in the play, and in the description of the encounter, Euripides appears to invert the gender stereotypes regarding men and women in regards to marriage. When Medea castigates Jason for divorcing her to marry the princess, princess, Jason argues he did it for Medea and the children because marrying the princess will bring them all financial security. 
Jason then tells Medea he owes her nothing as it was Aphrodite that caused her to fall in love with him and to aid him. In other words, Jason is engaging in marriage for financial security, which is the stereotypical reason why women engage in marriage, and Medea enters the marriage based on physical attraction or emotion as she was under the spell of Aphrodite, which is the stereotypical reason men engage in marriage. Another theme in Medea that is not discussed as much as gender is the theme of children. It seems there there isn't any area of this play where there isn't some reference to children. Probably the most interesting, interesting way Euripides uses this theme is the way he has Medea use the concept of children to achieve her revenge. In this play, Medea uses or manipulates three men, Creon, Aegeus, and Jason, to achieve her re plan of revenge. First, she manipulates Creon when, she, when he arrives to throw her out of the city. Creon is certain Medea will do him and his family harm and orders her to leave. Despite all of Medea's pleadings, Creon is resolute, but then, but then Medea says, Let me stay here just a single day longer, Creon. Let me stay and think over where I shall go on in exile and how I shall find a living for my children, for whom their father has completely failed to provide. Take pity on them, Creon. You too have children of your own. You too must have a soft place in your heart for them. What happens to me no longer matters. I only grieve for the suffering that will come to my children. After saying this, Creon agrees to allow Medea to stay one more day in Corinth. After Creon leaves, Medea get, begins plotting her plan of revenge. However, she says she needs a place of protection once she commits her crimes. Then Aegeus of Athens walks in and he tells her he is in Corinth to find a way he can father children. Medea and Aegeus make a deal in which is that Medea agrees to give him drugs that will cure his sterility if he will agree to give Medea protection in Athens when she commits her crimes. Once she secures an oath from him, he calls for Jason and says she forgives him and then convinces him to take their children and go to the princess and have them give her a gift of a crown and wedding dress that will kill her. Then to complete her revenge on Jason, she kills the children when they return. To sum it up, what Euripides did was he had Medea use children in an abstract way to manipulate Creon into giving her an extra day to plot her revenge. Then he had Medea use or manipulate Aegeus by agreeing to give him drugs to help him father children in exchange for protection. And finally, he had Medea manipulate Jason into having the children bring the gifts to the princess to kill her and then Medea killed the children when they returned. So in using children to, to obtain her revenge, she went from using children abstractly with Creon and then to Aegeus and then using them in a real sense with Jason. Lastly, a theme in Medea which possibly can be, can be found is one that may be, may be stated in the final statement by the chorus which which says which says at the end many many are the things that Zeus determines high on the Olympian throne many the things beyond men's understanding that the gods achieve and bring to pass many the things we think will happen yet never happen and many the things we thought could never be yet the gods contrive such things have happened on this day and and in this place the lines, many the things we think will happen, yet never never happen, and many the things we thought could never be, yet the gods contrive, appear to deal with the concept of lacking knowledge or lacking the ability of prophecy. This possible concept could be relevant to the first characters, to, character to speak in this play, the nurse, and the last character to, to speak, Jason. In the opening scene of Medea, the nurse says, Oh, how I wish that famous ship the Argo had never made its way through the blue simple clades to the land of Colchis. How I wish the pine tree had never been felled in the glades of Pelion and never been hewn into oars for the 
heroes who were sent to fetch the golden fleece for Peleus. For then my mistress Medea would never have sailed to the towers of the land of Eucalus, her heart on fire with love for Jason. She then reflects on more things that occurred in the past. She then says she fears Medea will harm the children and asks the attendant to keep them away from Medea. This nurse appears to know that know that Medea will harm the children even before Medea knows this because it, it appears that, that Medea first begins to talk about killing her children after her meeting with Aegeus. I think the reason why this nurse is able to predict this behavior of Medea is because she is looking back into the past. In fact, she is going so far back in the, in the past it appears absurd as she says she wishes the pine tree had never been felled that was made into the oars for the ship to Argo. This behavior by the nurse seems to be the opposite of the last character who speaks in the play of Jason, who appears to be completely focused on the future. He tells Medea that he made the new marriage with the princess to secure the future of her and the children. He also talks about fathering new children bound in royal blood to their current children, which would bring security to all of them. It's possible the reason why Jason does not perceive what Medea is about to do is because unlike the nurse, he is completely focused on the future. In fact, Medea is, in, in fact, Jason is so obliv oblivious to what Medea is about to do, he aids Medea in carrying out her crimes by taking the children to deliver the wedding dress to the princess. By observing the behavior of these two characters, Euripides is possibly saying that looking back into the past could give you prophetic capabilities and focusing too much into the future can give you the opposite. 